recommended role on the TTC. Hey everyone, it is Wednesday, September 28th. The time is 4.49 p.m. and the temperature right now is around 13 degrees Celsius. And I'm here in Chinatown. And this would be Spadina Avenue. And back in January of 2019, I recorded a video that started around this spot. And I walked from the main Chinatown here and I headed east all the way over to East Chinatown, which is located around Broadview and Girard. So I thought for this one, well, for the most part, retrace my steps from that walk. And there's a look north up Spadina. So I'll be walking south here down to Dundas and then I'll be heading east and along the way I'll walk through the area where Toronto's first Chinatown was located this is St. Andrew Street and just in on the right is Kensington Market the CN Tower, of course, to the south of here. And there's Roll Sand. A place that's been called out lately for some of its, I guess, somewhat shady tipping practices. I've never had a bad experience there, but apparently there's been some instances of forced tipping. Oop, just accidentally zoomed in, at least according to some posts on Reddit. And there seems to be a lot of people backing up those posts. So this is south down the east side of Spadina. And I think this walk should be somewhere around four and a half to five kilometers or so. There's Swatow. That place is quite excellent. to becoming Chinatown in this area, along with the neighboring Kensington Market, was primarily a Jewish area. I think I had a funky e-bike, but since I think 1997 or so, there's been a larger influx of mainland Chinese and Mandarin-speaking immigrants to the area. It was originally more Cantonese. Well, I think most of the restaurants still seem to be Cantonese. So this is the main intersection of the main Chinatown at Dundas and Spadina. So I'm gonna turn east here and head along the north side of Dundas Street. Right 
So this is one of two proper Chinatowns within the city. There's a cool view of the tower. Although there's several Chinese areas in North York and Scarborough, as well as some of the surrounding suburbs. There's a lot of Chinese themed malls and plazas in Markham, Richmond Hill, and Mississauga. And probably some of the other suburbs. This is one of the biggest Chinatowns in North America. And this is Huron Street. And there's a 506 Carlton streetcar that's made its way down to Dundas. That entire streetcar line is a mess right now. That runs mostly along College, Carlton, and Girard, which is just to the north of here. But it's currently zigzagging all over the place. And there's a 505 Dundas streetcar behind it. And that one is only going as far as Lansdowne. I'm not sure if the streetcars have returned all the way to Dundas Western Art. I'll see if I can spot a streetcar further on in this walk that's going to Dundas West Station, where it would normally terminate. And to the east of here, that one terminates at Broadview Station. There's the Lucky Moose Food Mart. So this would be the eastern end of Chinatown. <laughs> and it'll be quite a while till I step foot in East Chinatown. And as I mentioned along the way, we'll be walking through the area where the, the city's first Chinatown was located. And there's the Art Gallery of Ontario across the street. was a Pizza Nova delivery driver. Let's see, I've got Strava running here. So, so far I've walked 0.74 kilometers at an average speed of 4.8 kilometers per hour. There's an inverted 3D Van Gogh. And 
I did not check out the Van Gogh Museum when I was in Amsterdam. And this is McCall Street coming up. And look south, Queen Street is the next major street that runs parallel to Dundas to the south of here. There's St. Patrick's. And this would be St. Patrick Street. So coming up at University, we'll find St. Patrick Station. And just on the other side of that, is where Toronto's original Chinatown was located. And that's an area that at least has now been unofficially dubbed as Little Tokyo. That's a 506 Carlton streetcar that's only going to Lansdowne. That is where Dundas and College Street merge together. Here's University. I was here earlier today in the morning recording a walk. The south side of Dundas here is a little more interesting. I'll just cross over. That's me. Hello. Do you want to be on a video? Oh, nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Have a safe ride. the original Chinatown, which has its roots going back to the early 1900s, I think as early as the year 1900, it would have loosely been bound by just to the north of Dundas Street here, and by University Avenue to its west, save for the area occupied by the Armory and Osgood, or Osgood Hall just to the south of here, to the south by Queen Street, to the east by Bay Street coming up. We really like this uh, boat on the <laughs> And it was expropriated throughout the 1950s to make way for new city hall and a public square. I think there was more to it than just that. There was kind of a movement in a lot of cities to clear out their Chinatowns back then, or at least limit their growth. Well, at 505, 
Dundas didn't have short turn on it. Maybe that one is going all the way to Dundas Station. For instance, Montreal's Chinatown is much smaller than it used to be. There's a number of major developments in that area that cut down its size. And the same story kind of repeats through a lot of major North American cities. In fact, not only did Toronto kill its original one, they almost killed its new one. Or I guess Chinatown West, or the main one where I started. There's a plan to build the Spadina Expressway that would have gone right down Spadina Avenue. And that would have had a disastrous impact on the current Chinatown, which migrated over that way after this one was expropriated. It also would have probably been the end of Kensington Market as we know it. And it would have cut right by Casa Loma. So fortunately, I think it was in 1971, that project was killed. It did end up being partially built. And there's a small leg of it north of Eglinton. And this is Elizabeth Street. So to the south of here, I think between Elizabeth and Chestnut Street, there's a small park that has a plaque that commemorates the first Chinatown. Oh, have a good day. Perhaps that's a future video idea, exploring Toronto's first Chinatown, or at least the area where it once was. Chinatown where I'm heading was established in the early 1970s. And that's certainly the lesser known, and I'd argue lesser appreciated of the two. All right, let's cross over to the north side. I'm always on the south side of Dundas along the Eaton Center here. So this is Bay Street. There's the Eaton Center, and to the south, the Financial District. And this would be the Atrium on Bay on the left. That's an office complex and shopping center. It used to be the old Ford Hotel. And coming up will be Young and Dundas. Another off route 506 Carlton. There's a development proposal here. Put a 34 story building. Not 
not sure how that would work, if they're going to carve out part of the atrium or not. Here's what happens to your bike if you leave it unattended too long in the city. And no one's going to help you look for it or look for the guy who did it. is Young and Dundas. Let's look south down Young. I'm going to skip walking through Dundas Square in this one. They always seem to be playing this generic classical music through this area. And we enter the dark side, the east side of downtown. Just kidding. But just to the north of here is the TMU campus. And the video I published this morning was a walk through that campus. The school formerly known as Ryerson. So this is Victoria Street. And you'll notice I'm crossing as the timer is counting down. And technically, that's a no-no. And some people have called me out on that in the comments, but in reality, just as in most, most big cities, if you can make it across before the timer goes all the way down, people are generally going to cross the street. And there's a what about the driver's argument, people waiting to turn. Well, a pedestrian waiting for a whole light cycle to switch through versus a driver just waiting a few seconds for a pedestrian to clear out. Kind of tells you how I feel about that argument. The lights are flashing, but nobody's crossing, it seems. So this area is known as the Garden District. Classic Toronto right there. And it's named after the Allen Gardens. There's been a lot of new developments and gentrifying along the stretch of Dundas Street East. I think University being back in session has really given this area kind of a shot in the arm, at least in terms of how lively it is. Although once I'm east of Jarvis, I think that'll be changing.
Okay, so I have walked 2.3 kilometers so far at an average of 5.4 kilometers per hour, so I picked up the pace a bit. There's a cannabis retailer on the left. Get plugged. Plug cannabis. It'll be interesting to see if that place is still there much longer. There's been a number of cannabis shops closing up lately as the market gets oversaturated. And if you're into that, you can always just order online as well. And here comes Jarvis Street. So the major east-west street just to the north of here is Gerard Street. I could walk up to that and head east over to East Chinatown. But we'll stick to Dundas, at least for a little while longer. There are way too many people <laughs> riding on the sidewalks. I say that as a guy flies around me. If you're over 14, get on the road where you belong. And if you're not comfortable, find a new route or walk your bike or scooter on the sidewalk. That's some selfish behavior right there. And sadly, throughout the pandemic, it's become more and more common. I've been biting my lip on this walk so far, but It was just a few too many for my liking. And we are at George Street. And there's the endangered Fillmore's Hotel. The Blue Jays and Fillmore's Dancers. What is the best meaningful entertainment this fall? And that's a look north up George Street. Oh, I saw flashing lights up there. It's just a construction vehicle. I was curious as to what that was. Fillmore's is an old hotel and gentleman's club that's been here forever. But soon that property will be redeveloped. And as you can see, the character of Dundas has changed quite a bit since I went east of Jarvis Street. Electra live in the heartbeat of Toronto. Here's Pembroke Street, and this is where the Ken Continuum lives.
is Sherburn and Dundas here. One of the downtown intersections with not the best of reputations. I've never had any issues walking through here. There's an outreach center across the street. And to the south at Queen and Sherburn, there's a safe injection site. And this old age living home installed this cage around the property. They needed special permission from the city to do that, just to keep out some of the loitering. And sadly, there's where someone in a wheelchair was hit by a truck. the Toronto East Drop-In Center. And they're handing out meals, that's great to see. video workshop. That can't still be a thing, whatever it was. And a lot of the residential streets around here actually have a lot of beautiful homes on them. There's a lot of nice tree-lined streets. Well, thank you. I don't know why I said thank you, but he was friendly. As we have arrived at Ontario Street, so the area to the north of here is part of Cabbage Town. There's a large collection of old Victorian style homes in this area. So to get to East Chinatown, I could either Stay the course along Dundas here. And when I cross the Don River and get to Broadview, just north of there, is part of East Chinatown. Or I could head up to Gerard Street and walk into East Chinatown that way. Go by the main gates. There's the moving electric bikes truck. I'm taking a long, hard look at their newest fat tire bike. It's quite neat. It has two batteries. That would give some impressive range. Rent an e-bike for 99 a month through Zig. There's a drop-in shelter. And coming up is Parliament Street. And once I cross Parliament, I'll be in the Regent Park neighborhood. And in that first video I did back in 2019, walking between the Chinatowns, I cut north through Regent Park. And I went up to Gerard.
and maybe buy and sell a retail store. What would they be buying? it's into Regent Park and I'm planning on doing a video through here. I'm going away next month so it might be one of the first ones I do when I get back and I'll talk a lot about the redevelopment. I've also got one in the works in the coming weeks to go through Cabbage Town just to the north of here. Yes, there'll be a number of videos and hopefully live streams from overseas. I still haven't revealed where I'm going. So this is Regent Street. I still have my random directions app. Maybe I will let this decide my fate if I'm to continue along Dundas to Broadview or cut north through the park up to Girard. When I get to the big park itself coming up, I'll put the app into action and we'll let it choose my fate on this one. It's currently 527. I have till 615 to tap back into the TTC without getting charged a second fare. There was a pretty bad delay making my way south into downtown from Midtown. Otherwise, that would have been no problem at all to make that window. I still should be able to make it. I have part two of a channel member and Patreon supporter video to wrap up after this. And hopefully I can find my way onto a streetcar or even all the way up to Broadview Station. There's someone rocking out. So this is Regent Park on the left. There's a, a large athletic playing center just to the south of here. the Pam McConnell, I think that's what it's called, public swimming pool right there. So do I continue straight along Dundas, which I kind of want to do, or do I go north up to Gerard Street? Straight or left? Our fate has been chosen. We're going to cut through the development here. That's okay about Broadview. I'll be covering that in a future walk as well. It's 
So that stretch of East Chinatown I'm missing, I'll be able to record in that one. I also have an East Chinatown to Little India video in the works. There's looking at the pool facility. Now it's through the last remaining part of the original region park development. So these low rises will soon be demolished and replaced with shiny new towers. residents being displaced will be offered new units, new affordable rent controlled units in the new buildings. I think they'll be smaller. There's a really neat old documentary called, I think it's called Farewell to Wood Street. You can find on the YouTubes that features this area. And it gives a fascinating look as to what life was like when this complex just opened. This is certainly how not to build a housing development within a major city. Hey look, the 506 has reappeared. And it's native habitat along Gerard Street. Again, just to the north of here is Cabbage Town. Regent Park used to be all Cabbage Town before that was knocked down to make way for this housing complex. Although it's worth noting, although Cabbage Town has a reputation for having a lot of beautiful, old, very pricey Victorian buildings. When they decided to put this development in, that was not really the case. A lot of them were run down and operating as rooming houses with very little in the way of hygienic amenities and that sort of thing. The area was considered very much a slum at the time, at least this part of Cabbage Town. This type of low cost, isolated community building has failed pretty much everywhere it's ever been tried. This is River Street coming up. So we are almost at a downtown and into East Chinatown. And 
I think I said farewell to Wood Street. It's actually Oak Street, the name of that documentary. And the sign, 210 Oak Street, <laughs> is what rang that bell. There's a look south down River Street, which ends just north of Girard here. And it merges down onto Bayview Avenue. Now we exit downtown as I cross over the Don River and Don Valley Parkway. We'll take a look down at that. It's 535, so I'm guessing the northbound traffic should be pretty backed up right now. We'll see if that's true. really no reason for this bike lane not to be protected or at least semi-protected they could put bollards on it there's two lanes of traffic so if a vehicle breaks down there's not a total blockage there's just too many instances where pedestrians and cyclists are an afterthought Look, there's people, <laughs> that's utterly ridiculous. There's a bike lane and they're riding on a narrow sidewalk. See, this person's doing it right. Although their 9-bot Max didn't sound all that healthy. over top of Bayview there's a two-way bike lane but it's also a sidewalk so is that a multi-use trail I never really understood this configuration I think if they wanted to they could have built a sidewalk properly on the side of the road what are they filming over there Am I on the wrong side of the street Bunch of people with their cameras and tripods out. And traffic seems to be moving in both directions on the DVP. Maybe that's just some kind of photography group. There's Bridgepoint Active Healthcare. That used to be the home of Riverdale Hospital, right next to the old Don Jail. And the Don Valley Parkway south of here, if you merge onto the westbound Gardner Expressway, you get treated to a spectacular view of the skyline. Oh, and northbound traffic is backed up. I don't think the camera can pick that up very well. If you're looking, if you're on your bike or scooter and you're looking to turn left on Broadview up ahead, it can be wise to circumvent the main intersection and go left here. And this will spit you out on Broadview. As I blatantly cross against the signal. Oh, there's someone else with the camera set up.
so that has been 4.66 kilometers. So I said four and a half to five kilometers. I've maintained an average speed of 5.4 kilometers per hour and a total walking time of 51 minutes so far. I think I've made good time. And just across the street is Hubbard Park. Named after the city's first elected black mayor. Or I think black politician. Who would go on to become the mayor. In fact, he was the first black politician to serve in the entire country. And that was back in 1894. And the Don Jail, just over there, dates back to the 1860s, although it's now an administrative office for the hospital. And here's the East Chinatown Gates. So welcome to East Chinatown. We did it. This area is primarily Chinese and Vietnamese. And unlike the other Chinatown, it's more mainland Chinese. It's also a lot smaller, lesser known, and I would argue underappreciated. There's a lot of great food here. And this too was formed in part because of the expropriation of the first Chinatown. I was yelling at that driver, and the driver said the light wasn't on yet. I can't choose sides. I didn't see what happened. So this is Broadview Avenue. And I'll be doing a walk, I think, from top to bottom along Broadview, or at least from Danforth Road down Broadview and East Chinatown primarily runs along this stretch of Broadview for a few blocks to the south of here and along George Street East as this screechy streetcar makes its way from Dundas heading south of Broadview. And I believe that thing is a pantograph connecting it to the wires overhead. East Chinatown continues for several blocks along Gerard here. Like I said, I'll be back in a future video covering East Chinatown and probably walking all the way over to Little India or vice versa. So I hope you enjoyed this one starting in Chinatown near Dundas and Spadina and heading east passing through the first Chinatown that led to the creation of these other two Chinatowns. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. If you wish to support the channel, there's links to my Patreon and YouTube channel membership in the description. And I have an Instagram account at Johnny Strides. Final ride stats or ride walk five kilometers at 5.3. There's a 506 Carlton. So on that bombshell, thank you for watching and I will catch you on the next one.